A ship that fell into Lake Michigan's depths about 150 years ago has been discovered remarkably undamaged by two shipwreck hunters about 10 miles off the Wisconsin coast. The 156-year-old Trinidad, which previously transported grain over the Great Lakes via the Welland Canal before becoming lost in 1881, was discovered off the coast of Algoma in July. Two years ago, Brendan Baylard and Bob Jack set out on a quest to find the trading ship. Since then, they have used sonar technology and decades worth of historical data in their search. Due to the schooner's incredible survival throughout the years, these efforts culminated a few weeks ago in what maritime historians are calling a remarkable discovery and time capsule into the past. The pair provided images of the ship's hull and deckhouse, which are still intact in a statement announcing the discovery this past week. To ensure the safety of the ship's delicate wooden hull and historical artifacts, they chose not to reveal the location of the ship with any specificity. Speaking to the New York Times on Saturday, Baylard remembered the moment when he and his buddy saw the wreck for the first time after utilizing sonar technology to locate its resting spot. We were astounded to discover that the deckhouse was still present along with all of the crew's belongings and cabinets filled with stacked plates. He said, It's really like a ship in a bottle a few weeks after he and his companion used an underwater vehicle to have a closer look at the location. A time capsule, that is. Similar thoughts were shared by Baylard in a statement released a few days earlier. He also provided details about how the Trinidad had caught his attention nearly 20 years earlier while he was compiling a database of all known ships lost in Wisconsin waters. He claimed that the historic schooner ticked all the boxes as a potential candidate for discovery since her crew gave a good description of where she sank and she went down fairly slowly in deep water, so she was likely very intact. The Wisconsin Underwater Archaeology Association member said, she was also reasonably near to a port city for convenient access. His companion soon joined him in his efforts as the two amassed dozens of old news articles from the 1800s detailing Trinidad's construction, launch, and career, as well as its loss on May 11 when the boat started to fill with water at around 4.45 in the morning. The ship's mascot, a large Newfoundland dog who was snoozing close to the stove as the ship began to sink, regrettably perished with the ship, the expert said. Fortunately, all eight men were able to board a lifeboat and escape without injury. Most of the men didn't have their coats or rain gear and were rapidly chilly. Balliard added of the group, they eventually reached the port city of Algoma, where people revived the frozen crew and provided them with food and dry clothing. Before being transported to Chicago, the crew boarded the J.B. Merrill, another schooner, at that location. According to Balliard, Jack and he used the account recorded by the ship's captain, John Higgins, and other survivors to find the disaster. William Keefe, a shipwright, constructed the 140-foot-long schooner on Grand Island, New York, in 1867. It was largely utilized in the grain trade between Milwaukee, Chicago, and Oswego, New York. But early on May 13, 1881, after passing through the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal, it developed a catastrophic leak while transporting a shipment of coal destined for Milwaukee. According to a news release, it sank about 10 miles off the coast of Algoma, taking all the crew's belongings and the captain's pet Newfoundland dog with her. After eight hours of rowing in the ship's yawl boat, Captain John Higgins and his crew of eight made it to Algoma, which is located about 120 miles north of Milwaukee. Alive, a few days prior to sinking, Higgins thought Trinidad's hull had been harmed while it was traveling through ice fields in the Straits of Mackinac. According to a news release, after finding Trinidad in July, Baylard and Jack informed an underwater archaeologist with the Wisconsin Historical Society of their discovery. The underwater archaeologist then arranged for the site to be surveyed with an underwater vehicle that verified Trinidad's identity and recorded historical artifacts. To enable virtual site exploration, a three-dimensional ship model has been made. In order to add the location to the National Register of Historic Places, 
Baylord and Jekin tend to collaborate with the Wisconsin Historical Society.